it deals with <clears throat> principles illustrating why it's always best to trust God's word than our senses. Why it's always best to trust God's word rather than our senses. <clears throat> I'd like to ask a brief prayer from the Father to bless his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. We thank you for the blessings you've bestowed upon us. We thank you above all for your precious presence that's with us and in us. Now, Lord, we ask that you would take your word and impart it to us, Lord. Let it be a seed planted in the hearts of the hearers that will spring forth an abundant crop, O oh God, to your honor and your glory. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in the precious, matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God's way is best. I call this part two. <clears throat> Scripture teaches man only sees things subjectively. In other words, the mind of man sees things as they appear to be, not as they actually are. Turn to Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse 12. Proverbs, the 14th chapter, verse 12. Scripture teaches, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, the end thereof are the ways of death. Man sees subjectively, and Satan capitalizes on that, because Satan is a master illusionist, a master deceiver. And he could take something which is only an image and make it look so real, so appealing, that men put their trust in it and wind up going down to destruction. Conversely, Scripture teaches that God, in his word, will reveal things as they actually are. God does not deal with imaging with illusion, God deals with reality. And God will reveal things as they actually are. Now, the definition of things as they actually are is called truth. God deals in truth. Turn to John, the 16th chapter, verse 13. John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. Truth, everything that he shows us is actuality. It is things as they actually are, not things, circumstances uh, uh, that are illusions or things that they appear to be. For he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So God deals only, exclusively, in truth. Now, Scripture teaches the influence of Satan and the Luciferians, that is the principalities, cause man to see a distorted view of life. 
There is another reason why we can't trust the senses. Satan's influence will cause man to see life in a distorted perspective. Turn to Ephesians, the second chapter, verses 2 to 3. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 2 to 3. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So Paul illustrates the fact that Satan operates in the life of everybody at one time or another, working illusion, working distortion, manifesting <coughs> desires in the characteristic, in the personality, in the makeup of the individual that will take him off into a path that Satan can influence, that Satan can control, having nothing to do with the truth, but everything to do with Ill illusion and appearance. The world operates off of illusion. Man is not progressing. Man is going in circles, repeating the same fallacious belief over and over and over again and suffering as a result of it until people come to an understanding of the truth which can only become available through God's word. Scripture teaches with this combination of conditions, the mind being open to illusion and the life being influenced by pursuing things that are not real to begin with, but only appearing to be important, only appearing to be real, only appearing to be beneficial. This combination of principles, this combination of conditions working in the mind makes it impossible to achieve spiritual success, the answers to life's great issues would never be obtained. Man can never arrive at the truth of his circumstance, his condition, because he does not have the equipment to do it. Only through God can man understand his purpose, understand the things that he needs to prepare him for entering into eternity. Understand the true important principles in life. Turn to Isaiah 57 chapter, to the Isaiah 59, verses 7 to 10. Here, the condition of man is illustrated. Isaiah 59, verses 7 to 10. Speaking about the motivation of man, speaking about the condition of man. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. There is no judgment or justice in their goings. They have made them crooked paths, Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. He's referring to the leadership that's leading the society in this particular time period. 
<clears throat> Therefore is judgment far from us, neither doth justice overtake us. We wait for light, but behold obscurity, for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. This is the condition of the human mind. This is the condition of man apart from God, God's word, God's truth. A pawn, a puppet in the hands of Satan being manipulated, being deceived until he leaves this world and goes into the torment regions of eternity. Now, Scripture teaches God's word applied to the life gives the saint an eternal view of life. The senses only give a temporal view. So following the senses at best only will give a temporal perspective and temporal benefits. In other words, everything you get following the senses is only temporary if you can get something positive out of following the senses. Following God and God's word will give you an eternal benefit every single time. Turn to Hebrews, 11th chapter. We're going to see an example of a man that followed God's word and of a man that didn't. Hebrews 11th chapter, verses 8 to 10. By faith, what was Abraham's faith based off of? Based off of the promises of God, the word of God. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. So they all believed the word of God, the promises of God. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now the scripture goes on to tell us they understood that the promises that they would receive would not be in their lifetime. They understood that these promises would be received in eternity. <clears throat> Turn to verse 13. Same chapter. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. The word of God will always give you an eternal view of your life. And as you achieve an eternal perspective of your life, temporal blessings, blessings in this Time, play, time, space, continuum, that we, this reality that we are in, are also incorporated. But the blessings that you are going to look forward to and the blessings you're going to receive in the main are all going to be eternal. These, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the ones he passed his, God's word down to, all understood that the word of God would guide them in their life and guide them into eternity. They knew the eternal significance of the word of God, and therefore they were not limited to the opposition, to the problems, to the vicissitudes of this life. They were able to endure anything that life could throw at them. God could tell Abraham, at 75 years old, pick up, go to a place I'll show you. Abraham said, okay, Lord, no problem. You can deal with anything in this life through the word of God because the word of God is sufficient for all things. And it has an eternal perspective. <clears throat> now we're going to see an example of a man who followed his senses rejecting an eternal perspective of his life. Turn to 2 Timothy, 4th chapter, verse 10. 2 Timothy, 
fourth chapter, verse 10. Paul is writing to his son Timothy. He makes mention of one of their associates. Second Timothy, fourth chapter, verse 10. It says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed into Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. So this individual, rather than continue because of the hardships that appear to be coming down on Paul and his entourage, Paul's in jail, awaiting martyrdom, Demas determines that he's going to get his here and now. And he's wanting to get out. He wants to enjoy this life. Paul says, basically, <clears throat> that <clears throat> he <clears throat> loves this present world. Well, we don't know what happened to him, but we do know that he forfeited any eternal blessings that he could have had. Following the senses will cut you off from the eternal benefits that God would have us receive through his word. The inheritance comes through the word of God. The inheritance that the martyrs laid their lives down <clears throat> rather than give up, the inheritance is all eternal. <clears throat> Which leads us to the next principle. Scripture teaches <clears throat> those who follow the senses make a place for themselves in eternity. Those who follow the senses make a place for themselves in eternity. You turn to the book of Acts, the first chapter, verse 24 to 25. Acts, the first chapter, verse 24 to 25. Here, we see the example of Judas Iscariot who betrays Jesus, and now they are wanting to petition the Lord for a replacement for him. So they pray. We're going to look at the prayer that Peter speaks. Acts 1, verse 24 to 25. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knoweth the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. So what he did triggered his final resting place in eternity until the judgment. Following the senses, which are influenced by Satan, will cause the individual to make a place for himself in the torment regions of eternity. Conversely, following the word of God will lead us to a place that's already prepared for us in heaven. I'll repeat that. Following the word of God will lead us to a place already prepared for us in heaven. Turn to John, the 14th chapter, verse 1 to 3. The Gospel of John, 14th chapter, verse 1 to 3. <clears throat> Let 
Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. We have a place prepared. We have several places prepared for us. As we follow the leading of God, the Holy Spirit, and imparts truth, we are progressing to the place that God Almighty and our Lord Jesus, our Savior, have waiting for us. Turn to 1 Peter, 1st chapter. First Peter, first chapter, verses three to four. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, so it was sealed at the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. Two, an inheritance, incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Following God, God's word, God's truth will lead us to the place that God has prepared for us in eternity. Following our own senses, the distorted perspective that we have of life will enable us to make our own place in the torment regions of eternity. Now, what we also find, Scripture teaches at death, the carnal senses cease to function. So people that are relying on their senses to guide them will lose that reliance when they leave this world. Turn to Psalm. 146, verse 4. Psalms 146, verse 4. So as we're looking at these principles, we see more and more the reason for uh, trusting in God, following God's word, relying on God's word, even though it may fly in the face of our rationale, our, our, our intellect. But following God's word, applying God's word, will always, always, always benefit us. Psalms 146-4. Well, we read verses 3 to 4. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. We live in a society that basically encourages people to put their trust in men, institutions, governments, which is an illusion, because everything of man ultimately fails, comes to an end. But the scripture is telling us, don't put your trust in man, nor the things of man, in which there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. I look at people who have built financial empires, and the world fawns at them and rolls at their feet. The, the, the uh, Vanderbilts and the uh, Astors and the Rockefellers and all these individuals that amass huge empires of wealth. Where are they today? And what is the benefit of what they have done from an eternal perspective? 
None whatsoever. It's all an illusion because as soon as they leave this world, their wealth and everything else is left behind. They go into eternity as a pauper. Read Luke 16th chapter about the rich man. Put no trust in the illusions of this world and this world system because that's all it is, it's an illusion. Turn Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter, verses four to six. It talks about the state of individuals that leave this world. Ecclesiastes 9, verses 4 to 6. For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. A living dog is better than a dead lion. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So all the stresses that they went through in life, all the plans, all the schemes, all the conniving, is for nothing. Because when they leave this world, it ends. They enter into eternity in a totally different reality. The first thing the scripture says is when they enter eternity, they become humble. They are no longer the uh, prime motive, prime force that they were in this life. Everything radically changes. They lose their thoughts. The word thoughts there basically means plan, ability to scheme, ability to, uh, <clears throat> to uh, analyze and bring about things. It's all gone because the senses no longer function. They are in a particular region in which they're facing new conditions and things that they're facing basically are going to bring them torture, torment, and agony. Conversely, the saint who puts his trust in his spiritual senses based upon the word of God and the development of the Holy Spirit never ends. <clears throat> Scripture teaches those who have trusted God's word find their spiritual senses continue on into eternity. Turn to John, the Gospel of John, 11th chapter, verse 25 to 26. Gospel of John, 11th chapter, 25 to 26. Jesus saith unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? I'm going to repeat that. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. As we progress in the knowledge of God, the Word of God, and we mature and we exercise our spiritual senses, it will never end. It will continue on and on and on, only on a greater scale in eternity. John the sixth chapter, verses 48 to 50.
Actually, we go 48 to 51, John 6. Jesus speaking, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So as we partake of the Lord in this life, to the degree that you're going to partake of him, to the degree you're going to follow his word, to the degree that you're incorporating his life, to the degree that you are being changed to his image, it will never, never end. The joys, the peace, the love that you experience as a result of incorporating the life of Christ, the word of God in your life, this gets greater and greater and greater. It's a win-win situation as we die to self. Put no trust in the flesh. Put no trust in your senses outside of the guidance of the Holy Spirit. It's a win-win situation. You will walk in victory in this life, experiencing eternal life, the joys, the peace, the love, here and now. And then when you leave this life, it will manifest a hundredfold greater in eternity. So as we close, understand, when you read the scripture, when you have a problem with understanding, but you know that this is the word for you, and your mind and your circumstances say, well, no, this can't work. This is just something that doesn't make any sense. Do it anyway. It's going to benefit you. And on the other side, God's going to give you the understanding of why you had to deal with the things you dealt with. But because of your faithfulness to follow his direction, you came out victorious. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Help us, help us, Lord, to pursue your word. Help us to die to self. Help us to put no confidence in our rationales and our understandings, but help us, Lord, to totally incorporate life from your perspective. And Father, help us. We're sure to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' precious, matchless, wonderful name, Amen. Thank you.